27 years old, and I'm an architect in Boston, and this is my brother. I'm Matt. I am 25 as of yesterday. Um, I am a product developer working in Needham for Shark Ninja. Um, and yeah, we'll go into a little bit about our house housing. Yeah, as uh, Todd mentioned earlier, we'll just give you guys a quick rundown of our house hack experience. Uh, for, you, for those of you who don't know what house hacking is, it's uh, another term for owner-occupied. Um, it's when you buy a multifamily uh, property and live in one unit and then uh, rent out the others. And that, the goal of that is to offset the uh, mortgage payment and therefore reduce your uh, monthly living expenses. Um, so our property that we bought is in Malden. It's a side by side duplex and it's nine bedrooms, four bathrooms now. Um, five on one side and four on the other. So, here's a go through a timeline of um, how we went through the process. Uh, so, we started looking around in the spring and summer of uh, 2020, kind of peak COVID, but um, it didn't really scare us uh, because everyone was afraid of making moves at that point. Um, so we, I contacted John uh, through Bigger Pockets, and then he introduced me to Todd. And they, they really helped us start analyzing properties uh, using the Bigger Pockets calculator, which, as a few of you might know, um, really is good at analyzing rental properties. Um, and that helped us determine the criteria that we were looking for. Um, and. So at that time, we were looking for like around seven, eight, nine bedrooms, because we knew in the areas we were looking, we could get higher rent for that. Um, then as house hackers, we would move in. We brought a few of our friends with us too that really helped the whole, uh, whole process. Um, so in fall and winter of 2020, uh, we finally found a great property. Um, it was actually, I saw it listed on the MLS a few times. I uh, came on and then went off twice. Um, the previous two purchasers, both their, um, their financing fell through. And then when it came back on the market, uh, I called Todd up right away and jumped right back on it. And we made really quick moves to uh, uh, secure this place. Um, so we ended up purchasing it for about 790000 with an FHA loan. Um, for those of you who don't know what an FHA loan is, it allows you to put down a uh, lower down payment um, while you end up having to have a higher monthly payment because uh, you have to pay mortgage insurance. But I'm not a mortgage expert, um, so don't take my word for it. Uh, so then throughout the winter and spring, uh, we did a lot of renovations, a lot of sweat equity, as Todd mentioned. Uh, we have a bunch of pictures that we'll show you guys, uh, but that really helped us build the value of the property. And then um, we ended up moving in to our unit uh, in January 2021 with three of our friends, and they started paying rent immediately, which almost covered the mortgage. We had to pay like 500 bucks a piece. Um, and then we ended up finishing the rental unit in the spring, and we had a little difficult time trying to find renters at first. Um, so we ended up settling on a short-term lease with a few college kids who lived here for the summer. And so since it was a short-term lease, we charged them a little extra. Uh, and that ended up covering the mortgage. So we were, at that point, uh, meeting our goal of living for free. Um, and then come fall 2021, last year, uh, when the rates were really low, our neighbor's house sold for 1.2, I think. And then another house down the street sold for like 1.1. And so we were like, all right, this is the time. We got to make a move. Uh, we called my dad, who owns a mortgage company. And uh, he helped us find a good appraiser. And he reappraised it for 975, um, which is a lot higher than what we bought it for, which was kind of stunning at the time for me. Uh, so with that reappraisal, we refinanced into a traditional mortgage, dropped the FHA loan, lowered our monthly payment about 400, 500 bucks. Um, and the rents were still going strong. So at that point, we were uh, really making out. Uh, oh, and then in that refinance, um, we cashed out 6,700 bucks as a little, little 
Yeah, for us. So Mike, did you use <clears throat> the equity that you built between the sales price and the refi and the appraised <clears throat> price as um, as essentially equity down payment during the, the refinance period? Is that is that how you got out of the yeah the two hundred dollars a month? Um, PMI, yeah. Yeah. Is that how you get it? Nice. Exactly. What, what is your down payment now with the new mortgage? Uh, what is what is your equity in the new in the new financing? I'm just thinking if you did all this improvement and you cashed out, you know, six or seven hundred, yeah. you know, you probably went with let's say three percent, five percent down and you are now at maybe twenty percent. Yeah, so we're gonna go on with I think it was seventy five percent loan on the original price yeah, that we had. Seven ninety plus sixty seven and then the difference between that number and nine seventy five would be what's what's left in it. Okay. What did you guys do for renovations and like how much did you spend on that? Two slides from them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian, I'll wait. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's that's pretty powerful stuff. Like what you, like what you bought it for, what you reappraised and refinanced it for. Like that's that's some, that's great. That's good stuff. Congrats, yeah, definitely, guys. definitely exceeded my expectations. I yeah. You, but I was. Yeah, I mean, we were amazed. Like you said, when we saw our neighbors selling their house and we saw what they sold for, we immediately were like. No and talk about keeping your finger on the pulse of the market to make the right decision at the right time. You guys yeah. nailed that too. So kudos to that. Yeah, I mean originally on our first loan at the time we got like a 2.375 rate, which wow. is crazy right now. Um, the refi, uh, I think we ended up at three three point five, which is still really good. Doesn't matter. You're saving four hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so getting into this year, what we've done is the good part about house hacking is you live there, so obviously you can make renovations really whenever you want. Um, so we've spent a good amount of time this spring and summer. We remodeled the bathroom a bit, gave it a, just a modern facelift, um, brought up to speed. We rebuilt the bulkhead um, and stairs, which was just a piece of plywood before, so we made that some nice bulkhead doors. Um, remodeled the decks, which was a big undertaking that was something that we hired out because there was three decks that we wanted to remodel, which we'll get into that in some of the pictures. Um, two back decks and one front porch. And then just some small landscaping and curb appeal type stuff we've done um, a few weeks ago. We even redid our patio with some new stone to freshen it up a bit. Um, this summer we had tenant turnover. So five, uh, four of our guys moved out on the other side, so we're looking for new tenants. Um, we decided to pivot a bit in our strategy. We went into uh, renting by bedroom. Uh, we did this because we got a lot more quality and quantity of leads, actually. We weren't getting the best leads. Um, it was tough to you know, pick someone when we weren't truly sure if they were the right fit for our house. So by renting by bedroom, we just got a lot more targeted leads, Facebook groups, um, you know, Boston apartments pages, and we're just getting a ton. So, we were able to do that, find four people who we believe were the right fit, and then also, at the same time, a bonus increase the rent, because before we were doing you know, one rent for the whole house of a group, and now we were renting my bedroom, each person pays. So that was nice. Um, they moved in September, so that's been going strong so far. And the exciting part is next steps here, we're opening you know, chapter two of getting ready to do it all for again. So we're officially starting to look for our second investment property um, and excited to get into that more. The goal is to do the same thing. Just move out, keep this place for the cash flow and then do the same thing in the next place. Maybe you answered this when I stepped up. So what do you expect when you guys move out? Are you gonna do room rentals on your side too? I haven't fully decided. Yeah. Um, we have a targeted gross rental that we're gonna try and hit. Got it. Uh, as a combined two units. And so if you miss that out. number, whatever that number is, what do you think you're going to cash flow when you guys move out? Uh, I have all the numbers written down next to the Okay, yeah, I was just curious. Like, um, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, don't, don't ask too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting ahead of yourself. So come. <laughs> um, actually, just to preface this, this is the list of renovations that we did. Um, when we bought the house, um, it was in a family for 70 years, so it didn't really see any rental, didn't see much 
keeping up with the times. It was really set in like the 80s, kind of. Um, so there was only one older gentleman living on one side in the whole house, and so he didn't do too much work to the house. Um, he couldn't always keep up with it, and so that's why they decided to sell at the point. Um, so a lot of our renovations were more or less like a facelift, and there was like still a decent amount of infrastructure repairs that we had to make. Um, but yeah, some of the some of the big ones here. Um, Repoint resealed the field fieldstone foundation crumbling, so now we got that all sealed up. Brick piers were crumbling down too in the basement, so we put brand new valley columns down there to make sure the structure was good. Um, replace the entire cast iron plumbing system. That was a crazy undertaking and like definitely a lesson learned for us to don't leave a stone unturned with plumbing systems because like that was just it was cracked everywhere. It was a mess. Disgusting. Before we bought the house, um, we had a plumbing inspection and as soon as the, the guy snaked it and went right outside the foundation, it was just like it was just like it was shit. Like pun intended. <laughs> Um, but so we had before we bought the house, we convinced them to reroute the plumbing system into a different sewer, um, and then we tapped into that. Um, repainted the whole house. We added a three-quarter bathroom and a coat closet, which was um, pretty good because we just were told that we'd never be able to fit a bathroom in there. We ended up doing it. We had that in pictures. Um, we expanded a half bathroom on one side into a three quarters bathroom, adding a shower, um, using some extra space that we saw. Um, remodel existing bathroom, as I said, you know, facelifts the kitchen, new countertops, new hardware, new paint. Um, the bulkhead I mentioned, remodeling the decks was a really nice um, uplift this year. And just miscellaneous repairs here and there, we're just working on it, you know, every weekend, every other weekend, making sure everything's up to speed. We'll get to some of the fun stuff in the next slide with the numbers. So we'll take a quick uh, closer look at the numbers, what Tom was asking. <clears throat> um, so we purchased it for $789,900, and that came with, I think we did a 4.5% down payment with the FHA loan, which equates to about $35,000. And at the time, um, a monthly payment was $43,20. <clears throat> and Throughout the renovation phase, we spent about 56000 And now that was a lot of work by ourselves. We only outsourced the plumbing job, and our uncle was electrician, so we could help, help us out with that. We still pay them, but it's cheaper. Um, foundation. All the other the foundation stuff and the structural stuff we outsourced, but everything else we did ourselves, which saves a lot of money. Um, so then come reappraisal time, it uh, came out to 975 and with the refi, I dropped our monthly payment to 3840. Um, and so, basically, uh, the first tenants on the rental side, we were getting 4,000 a month for just three months, and then our three friends on our side pay a 725 a piece, um, which is pretty good price in Malden. Um, and then, the once they moved out, our second set of tenants. We signed them to a 12-month term for 3,600 bucks a month, still plus the uh, 2,175 on our side. And now, from September this month to uh, next year, as Matt mentioned, we have a bedroom by bedroom uh, agreement, and that's going to net us about 62,175 a month. <clears throat> um, oh, only both live for free, so that was really the goal. And then once we move out. Um, our estimated uh, NOI monthly uh, net operating income after we move out will be about 2,400 bucks, uh, just straight cash flow. And that's with 22% of the rent saved for operating expenses such as vacancy, uh, capex, and uh, maintenance. And that surprisingly equates to a cash and cash return about 32%. And in this picture, this is just the rental side. So Mike, it looks like, just doing the quick math, you guys might have about $84,000 to $85,000 of your own cash still in the property. Yeah. Um, and that's how you're factoring your, that's how you're factoring all of your, your um, the, 
the cash on cash return based on that 84. Yeah. It's pretty good, man. Thanks. That's great. <laughs> Uh, so now we'll get into some photos of our renovation. Yeah, this is uh, the kitchen on the tenant side. So, like I said, face look like hard, new hardware, new paint. We did new floors, uh, nice black granite countertops. This is our side, so we just did a similar thing, uh, just making it look a little bit newer. This is the bathroom, so that on the left, those two pictures, the coat closet room, you walk in the door. We had a two foot wide coat closet, and then we bumped it out two directions, um, really maximize as much space we could. And the bathroom is just on the edge of code minimum, uh, so it, we fit as much stuff as we could in there. Nice. What was behind the walls before you bumped it out? It was like a built in, and then we took like a foot or two out of the kitchen, which give and take. Actually, it wasn't even part of the kitchen. It was just like a cupboard. Um, so I figured the bathroom would be more valuable. Yeah. We had like two professionals say that there was no way you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he took the measurements and he knows the code. So we were like, we can do it. We'll figure it out. Um, this was our, ba uh, our bathroom that we just did recently this year. New tile. Um, cabinetry, new, new mirror, just to bring it up, make it a little bit nicer, new toilet. So this is the, the foundation. It was in really bad shape. Um, I don't know, a lot of houses in this area feel stone foundations are really old. Our house was built in really early 1900s. Um, so all the, the mortar between the, the stones were just falling out. There we could see daylight in one area in the corner. This, this corner back there it had a bunch of plants growing up from the ground because there was just a hole. So there was a lot of work done here. Ignore that chair. In there. How much did the basement work cost? Sorry? How much, do you remember how much the basement work cost? Yeah, so the, the, the foundation <laughs> and the Lally columns, we have the same guys who do. I think it came out to like 15000 Maybe it was 12000 Something like that. And then we, we sealed it with a um, waterproof thing too. Did you guys do that or the we did that? <clears throat> we just wanted them to really make it structurally sound. We added additional valleys too because the old house they didn't really account for longer spans back then. Um, what's the lally column? It's just a steel round column. Where is, is it in this picture? Is it? No, so I have it. I think we have the next picture. Steel filled with concrete, yeah. essentially. But I think it's a picture after this, but this picture on the left, this is what was originally sported in the house. Which is pretty sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other two pictures are just the uh, existing cast iron uh, sewer line, which are nasty. Yeah, see that leak. Yeah, yeah. I that the other duct tape. <laughs> You don't have a picture of that column. Maybe later, I don't know. This was a bedroom. There's eight layers of wallpaper. I was in there for maybe two days with a putty knife scraping. I've tried I tried everything. It was like two layers and then a coat of paint and then like six layers. So that it's, it's nice to look at. And the floors were under the carpet? Yeah, there was carpet everywhere on top of these beautiful hardwoods. So cool. Yeah. So how did you, going into it, did, did you have a good idea, a good idea of the estimated cost of repairs for things? Did you, did you go in with contractors like foundation repair, for example, like most people won't touch a house when they can s obviously see there's foundation repair. Did you have, how did you come up with those numbers going into it or did you not and you just were like kind of figuring out as we go? We had a rough idea, we figured it'd be like 40, 50,000. Uh, maybe 30000 for everything. Um, we didn't know the plumbing job was going to be so extensive. We had to replace the whole system. A lot of the sinks didn't have vents. Um, and everything was cracked, like I said. So that's a big job to upgrade. Um, so it definitely, we underestimated the repairs because we thought we could do a lot of ourselves, but that kind of stuff we didn't 
want to take that liability. Um, so to answer your question, semi had an idea. But yeah, but you didn't, you didn't double it. You didn't double your budget. You, did, you stayed pretty pretty well in, in range. Did you fund the renovation when you got the loan? Or so uh, that was partly cash and a lot of credit, credit card credit. Uh, which I ended up paying off within a year, anyways, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Pretty easy if you don't pay rent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're saying you opened like a new credit line where there's zero rate, zero percent interest? No, rate. I just built up my credit score. I mean, my uh, max credit limit to like sixty, eighty thousand, yeah. and then I just put it on the card. Oh. Um, not the smartest thing to do, but. So you were paying like a higher interest rate, but you're saying you just were able to pay it off so quickly that. Yeah, I wasn't too worried about the rate. Would you end up paying for the plumbing altogether? You know? 35. That was the majority of the bill. Without that, we yeah. would have been like at our budget. Yeah, wow. Is, is that, that to redo the plumbing in the whole house? Yeah. Okay. And that was with them doing the sewer, the sewer line. Yeah, they, they connected yeah. Um, to, one. Um, to the new sewer line. They had a reroute. Uh, and that was a big job as well. Can you explain that some more? What do you mean, like, reroute? Why did they have to reroute to a new sewer line? Right, so the existing sewer line went out the back of the house, and it went through two other properties. And as soon as it went through the foundation, it was just split. So it didn't make sense to dig up everyone else's property and redo it. Uh, so they reroute to the front of the house, which is where our street is, actually. And there's a, a newer sewer line right there that they connected to. So they had to, like, dig up the whole driveway or something to yeah. get yeah. that down? You can actually see it in some of their, if you go back a couple of pictures, you can see the new, you see that white PVC light? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that, that used to go right. up the, uh, the back of the house. That's the front of the house. Yeah, that's the front of the house. And now it goes out through the front. And right outside that wall is the sewage manhole. Oh, it's, it's your house like borders the street like that? Yeah, we'll close. We are, what do we guess? Here we go. That street didn't exist when the house was built. So they went up the back all the way to Main Street, which is like 100, 200 feet away. Okay. Don, what was your role? Did you kind of like mentoring and helping out? Or? I, I was a fire agent on this one. You were a fire agent, yeah. So you're familiar with kind of following up with uh, I think, of course, the project of what was going on. Well, I've just been following along with these guys. Yeah, but that that particular item was we had to address. Yeah, and that was a big item. That was a big one. And these guys, so like we did the inspection, if I recall, and you guys were like, "Hey, let's scope the lines," which isn't. I mean, it's not uncommon, but it's not. Not everybody does it. Yeah. And certainly guys, not for the smaller dude. Small these guys. guys did it, and within five minutes of that guy putting the line down, we were like, "Thank God." <laughs> they did it. So how much? Yeah. They actually made the whole, well, go ahead. They, um, they, were, they repaired everything from the ceiling in the basement down out to the sewer, they did. So they didn't do anything like interior of the house, they did everything connecting to the outside infrastructure. The seller did that? Yep. So before closing, okay. Before closing, yeah. That was our, our one bug boot. But so what was this 35, so 35,000 was the remaining stuff that you had? Or was that 35,000 amount you guys split that was through? remaining? Yeah. Did you guys negotiate the price down or like get a sell credit or anything like that? Or no, I mean, it fell through twice. Um, we didn't, at the time, we didn't think it would make sense to try to renegotiate because we had to move quick. Mm -hmm. Everyone was trying to get it. It was really well priced. Um, the ARV was a lot higher than it was being sold for. Yeah. So. We did not negotiate with people uh, by uh, asking price. Negotiate besides uh, the plumbing. Have you guys thought of what the number for the renovation would have been if you didn't do the work? Like for the work that you did, what would be the cost for that? I'm just curious if you um, hired out instead of you doing it, if you can guesstimate what the number would have been. Probably at least double. It's a lot of labor, a lot of man hours. Do you guys have background on that type of stuff? Like, uh, I, I, I did construction yeah. for a couple yeah. years, but I'm an architect now, so I'm, I'm like an eye for that stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, developer. I'm not. Yeah. Just, I'm sorry, said to you. You were the laborer. I got the drawing, so we, we put in the time. That was on the wallpaper duty. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was big um, tall, big job. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of the rooms, it, 
they just had carpet over the hardwood. But this instance, they painted the floors too. Which I don't get. But that was the thing to do. It came out awesome. Yeah, this one had, it was just raw wood, not finished at all. Linoleum on top, and then carpet on top of that. And then this, once it's refinished, it's like shiny. And these are the decks we just did this year. The so middle three are the old. Honestly, these guys, these units guys, they look condo quality now, based on what you did, which is, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know too much about turning them into condos, but I don't know, do you have to have private parking for that? I'm just saying the quality, like the, you guys, you guys renovated them to a point where they're, they could be, they could be considered, you know, you know, sold as condos, because they look so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's all our pictures. Awesome. So next property, like you guys looking for the same type of situation, something that's like fixer upperish that you can put sweat equity into or Yeah, I mean we we're just getting back into it, so we're looking for you know a multifamily that we can house hack with plumbing networks. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're still Gotta put sweat equity in because that's that's how you make build the value in it. You'd rather buy it lower, put some man hours into it, and then make it nice, kind of like this one. Because we were able to move in in three months. You know, yeah, every all day. of our free time we were there working on it. During COVID, I was working from home and I was living in Medford at the time, so I just shot over after five o'clock, like 10, 15 minute drive. Did you guys pick Malden or Malden picked you? I think Malden picked me. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to work with the town at all during the process? We if so, um, they could work with plumbing, but nothing else. Nothing else. And your plum plumber pulled the permits. Yeah. yeah. What was the scariest moment? That's a good question. When the ceiling started to just leak water everywhere. Oh yeah, you know, slight leak. One of the plumbers forgot to tell us that uh, the like the toilet was capped, and like the toilet was flush multiple times, and we just saw saw it leaking. We didn't know what it was from, so that was like pretty wild. The ceilings had come down. Um, when we heard about all the cast iron we had to replace, that's like a big undertaking. So that was pretty scary. Yeah, the budget for plumbing like doubled overnight, which was. Scary. Did you guys uh, once you're in it you just you just keep keep going, you know? <laughs> day by day. <laughs> just wait for the next day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ended up working out, yeah. Were you guys clear on the foundation issue making an offer? Oh that's kinda you realize it down the road? Um it turned out to be more of a job than we expected, but we knew there was some issues. Um, when we were walking through, there's a bunch of shit just piled up in the basement, so we couldn't really see everything. Mm. Definitely knew about the problems. Did you guys ever fight during the process? Oh yeah. yeah. I can't. I can't really see it. You guys seem very like composed. <laughs> no, there's there's some heat. You flushed that toilet. No, you flushed that toilet. <laughs> you flushed it twice. Nah, it definitely gets contentious sometimes, but for the most part, we work it out. Are you guys glad, so you, you picked a big duplex, like a large duplex with a lot of bedrooms in it. Are you glad you did that versus more units? Like a three, like a three unit versus a duplex with more bedrooms, given, your, given the strategy you've adopted? I feel like it'd be more work, more units, just because there's three kitchens instead of two. Um, so in that sense, I'd be pretty glad that we made this decision, but wouldn't be hesitant to not do a four family. Sure. I was just curious because I know a lot of house, we get a lot of feedback from clients that are house hackers that are big single families or big duplexes because for that very reason there's fewer of the expensive things, right. areas. Like two water heaters versus four. But you still have bedrooms. Yeah. And so if you're creative with your strategy, you can still get the rent up. 
Do all of your bedrooms have, I missed like the bedroom to bathroom ratio, like is it tough to get individuals in and like do they, does it share bathrooms if they don't know each other? So on our side, it's not a big deal because we're all friends. Right. But on the other side, uh, we're doing bedroom by bedroom now. Um, and I'm not too sure how they work. They just out. share everything. But they share the kitchen. They, they, they share the stuff. kitchen. They share the two bathrooms. Uh, they have their own private bedrooms. Um, and how, what about utilities? Do they decide on their own? How the utilities? Yes. Yeah. They decide. Yeah. <laughs> So they're not even in the room rentals. You don't include utilities, water, and sewer. I mean, they're all like which now mid twenties, so they think they're used to like they've all rented in Boston, so they're used to this kind of. Like, I was gonna ask. So is the renter different for the individual rooms versus like the group of people? Are you getting like different renters? The population. Well, that, we were getting like families with like multiple kids and dogs and cats versus middle age, like middle twenties, like just out of college. So you're like kind of young professional. It is a big unit, is it large unit? Yeah. And then you decide one year Yep. And then the town doesn't give you a hard time like it's not considered more than half I think it's four, right? It's whatever. <laughs> Which is really <laughs> <the other laughs> way. Uh, I do have a question. <laughs> is it one lease with all the tenants, or is it separate leases for each tenant? It's separate leases. Yeah. So what? We're breaking a lot. Did you use a broker? We all do. To rent? Did you use a broker to rent them? No. Did you rent them all at the same time? Uh, yeah, we got them all in on September first. Yeah, we use, I mean, Facebook groups was huge, but Zillow also, um, this app called, I mean, a website called Avail, I don't know if you know of it, but you kind of post on there and it spreads out to everything, so that's difficult. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> For the loan, did you guys apply for the loan with both of your names on it, or only one of you would get the original FHA loan under one of your names? Uh, did you have any issues during the rental process, and what move-in date did you set up for this place? Um, issues like finding tenants? Or yeah, like, like, yeah, during the screening. I wouldn't say issues, no. Um, we use apartments.com for, actually no, we use, we use a fail for them to do applications, and that does background check, credit, mm -hmm. um, Rental history, so eviction check, so eviction check. So we make sure that landlord, we called the landlords up, you know, got that in order. Credit check is huge, and then meet them is also a big thing on my plate because like you just want to meet them before you just say yes to anyone. Um, we haven't had any vacancies, so it's, it's been okay. We haven't had any tenant issues. Was it like a nine-one move-in day? Yes. Okay. How do you guys increase rents if you have on your friends? Have you guys done that or no? We've been nice. We've been nice. No, that 2175 has stayed pretty consistent. <laughs> <laughs> For now. Yeah. Do, do you think you'll hire a property manager? I think it depends what our next property is, how much we take on. I'd like to try with albums first, see how it goes. Because that's just another expense. But less time. My end goal is to retire like early, 40, 45 would be nice. Um, and so I want to keep getting house hacks, family properties, keep it rolling. Yeah, financial freedom is the best thing. You know, live life financially free is just a goal. So, however we get there. You guys are off to a good start, so awesome. thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.